got me, brother? Legendary. What's going on, buddy? Hey, man. I'm uh, switching to the right microphones and all that. Give me two oh. seconds, and I'll turn my video on. I'll all right. Got to see your beautiful face, baby. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> I love it. Okay, I think this is right. How's that? How's that microphone now? Oh my God, I'm 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 moist. <laughs> Come on, boom! Oh, what's up, man? Hey, brother. Good to see you, man. Good to see you too. Loving the picture you have right there. Which one? The legendary. Oh, this this is pretty good. This one right here. <laughs> that's no joke, man. No, that's uh, that's the ebook. I was uh, I dove back into it. I was reading it again. Oh, nice. Did yeah. you, uh, now, have you added anything else to your office? Um, I might have moved some stuff around. I got new logo with some animation, but uh, no. It's good, man. Yeah, man. It's going gonna, it's gonna to start doing more stuff I'm doing. I've got new, like, cameras and stuff up here, but uh, I'm going after YouTube hard this year. I've been really trying to figure out the algorithm, and uh, it's been fun. Like, just I've been deep into it, um, and so it. it's monetized, and it's starting to grow, and I see what, how it works and how it doesn't work. And so now I'm going to be pushing it pretty good. So that's my, that's my goal. So this podcast I decided to just bring it back and put it on YouTube and just get shit going and really trying to consolidate my brand and all the right stuff. Right. So. Are you bringing it now? <clears throat> was it Fridays, Tuesday? When were you doing the whiskey? Whiskey Fridays. Yeah. We're, that'll, that'll come back. That that's, you know, without the right, I think sort of framework for that. Um, it becomes more of a distraction, right? And so I think, you know, reading your book, if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. And Amen, so it became more of a, it became more of like, a, it was pulling me into it. Like it was really fun for a while because it was just something we were doing, but then it was taking away from some of the more meaningful work. And it was, it felt like we were forcing it. I did the same thing when I launched podcasts, lots of different pieces of content where it was just like, it was dragging me. And I'm like, no, I don't want to be a slave to this stuff. That's, I didn't start my business to have a fucking job. <laughs> so, Welcome to my world at the moment, right, man. Dude, I bet. So we, so we talked before the world went crazy. So what's been going on in your world, man? It's, it's allowed us to, it's interesting you brought up YouTube. That's kind of our last, we're still navigating most of social, yeah. um, but starting to hone it in and figuring it out. I think yeah. a little bit, seeing some growth on all pages, especially LinkedIn, which is where our, my people that's live. That's 100% where you should be. Yeah. That's where my people live. Yeah. YouTube though, we've got so much great video content from the podcast to stuff we recorded to live speeches we've done. And my team, myself, most of my community, my tribe, YouTube is like this unchartered, you know, the gold is out there, but you got to know how to get that gold. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot of wasted energy on YouTube. And, you know, like uh, the thing, like the, all the guys that I'm like, I've, I've been doing, I'm finally doing all my keyword research and the video I'm tracking who's doing what I'm seeing how things work. The monetization is a big one because the monetization tells you what's working. And yeah. so some of the weird shit that I've put, like one of my best performing videos right now is about how to connect zoom to otter.ai for transcribing your zoom meetings because it's getting recommended off of the zoom like main site and i was like what the hell's happening so like it's weird shit happens i'm like ah, i get it though once you start to get it then you see like why people are blowing up because there's a lot of videos i'm like this is my best video i made and it's like four people have seen it <laughs> right so and then it's like three a, of them are related to you <laughs> oh my God. yeah now it's four of them are me from different mobile devices <laughs> so it's like you want to shoot yourself in the face because you're like what am i doing but it's there's a whole like i've been following some really cool guys and really interesting ways and start i think i'll crack the code this year like it's just like it's i know just because I'm, I'm a smart guy you're a smart guy you probably got good people on your team where if you do the right things consistently don't worry about those goals it'll fucking blow up and i think like your message and what you're doing um you know i, I can take a look at your some of your stuff too and just see if i can see any insights for you but like it's just your audience like especially you know, the specific audience you have that you're trying to go after on LinkedIn, they're also on YouTube and you can cross platform that shit. And just people are like, and especially with your groups. Uh, so combining your groups, your YouTube, your LinkedIn, all of that with a very tight message and, and a niche, I think you'd crush it with YouTube. I think we, the messaging we have, all of that, the, the first five things you said is we haven't done a good job there. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, there's, there's, 
time and resources, time and resources, right? Yeah, then, absolutely. Uh, we're going to be intentional. I think YouTube is it, in video in general is the frontier, man. Um, you have to. It's so powerful. Yeah. So powerful. Yeah. It's like, and it's, I think authentic, uh, I mean, hate that word, authentic video. Like that's why live streaming works really well, but people, people crave it, man. People crave it, but they don't want to sit like they, the, the live stream, like one of the, like I've been watching a lot of Twitch guys because Twitch, Twitch streamers haven't figured out. My niece does Twitch. She's just a weird little nerd doing like dancing on video games. She's crushing it. I'm like why is, th- I worked really hard to learn a lot of ex- expensive shit. And, I don't, and she's killing it by with her stupid fake eyelashes and dancing with and my sister's like, I think she's like an online prostitute. I'm like, no, she just dances for money. I guess that's, I don't know how it works, but she's loving it, man. And she, are we all prostitutes? Dude, right? <laughs> and then when I went to visit her, I did, uh, she, I was like, do a live stream, show me how it works. And so I like her people, I was like asking people, I was like, what do you want me to make my niece do? So we were like making 10 bucks for every push up she was doing. I was like, this is crazy. Like it was wild, man. Like it's, it's a weird world out there, but people are craving that, especially right now. They're craving craving that connection right and so live stream and like doing this stuff and the personality like you could tell when people are fake but i think the uh, like the realness and the humanness is shining through and so there's some there's some really cool opportunities for people that fucking get it um that like especially like for you like this this level that you're at i think going into um this market you'd crush it i appreciate that brother and and uh, just one more update is you know, we had brought the one on speaking of the job, we had brought the one, one, one down intentionally because we were getting ready to do a lot of big keynotes, workshops, yeah. uh, be on other people's stages, um, conferences, things like that. You know, that was canceled in a matter of seconds. <laughs> um, yeah. Literally in one I day, it so all went shit, away. <laughs> I had so much shit booked and like, I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm just stay at home, dad. <laughs> we're not going to do that now, are we? <laughs> um, but we, uh, we can't, we've, we've started our digital project product process based on the book super excited about that but you know what we have had i think there's just a need in my skill set right now because our one-on-one coaching especially helping people with mindset and business like heavy business and financial stuff it's needed right now like this everybody's freaking out we're blowing up we're blowing (laughs) up to the point to where like shit, we got to be able to continue growing the practice for the future because this is a job Yeah, and to where I have something left in the tank because I'm sitting with these <laughs> men holding space. We're making big employment, governance, sales, yeah. um, relationship, man. People's relationships have gone fucking chaotic because people, they have to sit on top of each other now. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's some heavy shit that's going down right yeah, now, man, to be honest like, with you. Whatever, like, you know, like, you know, like, as you talk about, like, whatever your money is, it gets multiplied. But whatever your issues with the relationships, quarantine will multiply that shit, <laughs> which was, you know, it actually went the opposite for us because my, um, you know, my wife, uh, well, fiance, she's, we've been home and like, we're, we've turned into a couple of kids, man. We're having so much fun. Hell yeah. Like, we're just That's playing, awesome, man. That's why I like, is Heather is your wife, Be right? grateful. Yeah, be grateful yeah. for that, brother, because Dude, we, like, we, that's we a got- rare thing. I know we got electric scooters and like yesterday we jumped on our electric scooters, went to Walmart and then we had a couple of drinks in the park and then we came yeah. to the crib. We played guitar and ukulele. We have a big fire pit area and we just like, we're like, this is rad. And so like she, um, she had uh, like, she's a ballet uh, ballerina, right? So she teaches ballet. Nice. And then when all this stuff started happening, she was with a company that, you know, wasn't the best, uh, the school that like, she was an Academy of faculty instructor and they started to cut her hours. And as soon as I saw that back in, fuck end of april um mm-hmm. i said let's go let's build something so we sat up after a big long fight because she was miserable the last couple of years doing this uh big one long fight and i said let me show you something so we went and registered url online ballet training.com then i went on some software that i have we built the site like overnight and started taking people and then a week later she got completely laid off and this thing is blown up we went i know all the people that run all the business loans for canada we got that all approved and nice. she started to take off now she's like completely transformed the last two months because she's owning this thing so she's out shooting videos right now we're getting all the new equipment it's like she's pumped dude so just seeing that like that's that's where I, that's why i like reading your stuff because you're so committed to like relationships family and like all the money stuff yeah. that'll come but like Always. you know like it's uh, it's fun to see like these shifts right indeed man, I, I'm, yeah, man. I'm super stoked to hear that so that's something we have in common um just kind of crazy small world is my wife when i met her um, she taught 
ballet and gymnastics really? to little young girls. Yeah, yeah we're, doing, we're launching kids classes. <laughs> we should get her involved, man. We should see if she wants to do some classes. I want to see if my 44-year-old wife is uh, going to get back into ballet. That would be really yeah, a good conversation. <laughs> well, you know what? It's like when we talk about, you know, as we go, we're just talking all day. <laughs> but as we go, like, talking about, like, purpose and all that, we spend a lot of time really going after, like, what's the mission, the vision that she's trying to create, not just how to teach technically, because she mm -hmm. loves this, right? And so, you know, the, 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 her vision on ballet, this movement she's trying to create, she's got some really loyal people already. So I think she's, I mean, she, I shop, I'm just probably gonna be the janitor for her company. I don't give a shit. That's fine it. for me, man. <laughs> just check my ego and just cash my checks. <laughs> so <laughs> do some video editing and just get fat. I'm just a sex toy. Me. I'm just Dude, a sex right? toy. That's it. That's, That's all I, I gotta do push ups. <laughs> what you need, babe? <laughs> <laughs> she's like get out of my office this she's will be like, hers get out. this will be hers that'll say ballet it'll be fuck, i'm done just be in the corner taking notes <laughs> i still love it man i love like, you showed me the lighting and stuff last time i love yeah. what you've done there it's fun right um, we're, yeah, we're switching we're, we're over to stuff here too yeah you know what i'm switching over i'm getting um i'm getting a canon m50 we're probably buying it this weekend uh a new so it's not it's a mirrorless and then we're getting some of the, like the the shallow depth of field lenses and stuff to get uh, to build all. I've been doing a ton of research. We're building, getting some wireless mics and just a bunch of lighting, just cool systems for her and some different things. But this works great for what I'm doing, but I, I've got some, some new ideas. But it's, it, uh, it works, man. And I got this, I got my new legendary. I'm going to get, I, yeah. I bought that and I've been reading it, but I got I to buy it in paperback now. I got to get that. That's my next one. Here's the hardback. <laughs> yeah, well, that, whatever, hey, hardback. By, I by the way, the Audible just came out. The what? The Audible just came oh, out. Oh, man. You're going to crotch it with Audible. Did so, you, did so you do if, the recording? So if you like my Southeastern United oh, States, accent, that's what you get to hear for You're six gonna hours. You're going to crush <laughs> it on Audible. Well, you know what? It's, it's funny because we went for a walk and I was telling her about uh, like what we're going to be talking about and like, like who you are. And she's like, so it's like a self-help guy. I was like, well, no. I'm like, this is what he does. And she's like, anything, like, anything new? And I was like, you know, there's nothing really new in self-help. I mean, uh, you know, psycho-cybernetics way back in the day, people still reference it and everything. It's just people. I said, what it is, is what people use these tools for. Like there wasn't, mm -hmm. like there wasn't anything where I'm like, like your purpose statement stuff was good and how you tied everything together. That's what matters. But I said, it's probably more impactful the, the work that you do with the people you work with. Because it's, I mean, it seems the same thing. Jim Rohn, all these speakers, everybody that's ever been great at what they do, they, you know, they get on stage. It's not that. It's what people do with it. It's, you know, you could probably, if somebody read this cover to cover, it's like, if they don't even think about it or apply it, it doesn't matter if it's been said before, right? Like you reference so many different people and people, yeah, yeah, I've heard this before. And I've seen that before in sales training. And I'm like, well, fucking do something. <laughs> like, what are you doing about it, right? And Take and, action. Yeah, <laughs> crazy, right? Like, that's why people always ask, you want to come do motivational speaking? I said, fuck, no, I'm a get shit done guy. I'm like, go do something. <laughs> And then you come back and be like, I'm motivated. I'm like, surprise. <laughs> it's, right? And it's, a, it's an epidemic, though. I mean, Crazy. so I was, um, I was when I was uh, in the financial world for so long, yeah. we would bring in these lit very, very expensive sales training, governance training, operational efficiencies. And these people knew their shit. Yeah. And all of their work was amazing. But we were so smart, you know, we'd spend a hundred grand per person. They'd come in and give us all these things and we'd throw it in the garbage. Yeah. We'd just go back to doing what we've always done. And I kept screaming in these board meetings. I'm like, what? Are, we're just wasting money. This person yeah. came in here and invested in us, gave us skills and talent, and we're too smart for that. Yeah. It's like we get in our own way. So it's like we get so comfortable in what we've always done. We don't apply this new wisdom or this is one small tactic or a smell sales strategy, whatever the hell it is. Anything, right? Yeah. It's anything, man. And so I'm a, I'm a secret. Like, look right here. These are all, most of them are self-help books. Yeah. Me too, man. Like uh, In business. I, went back, I went back through my YouTube channel, all my shits on personal development. I'm like, I don't talk about sales at all. <laughs> <laughs> But like all my, like, it's like, I love like, uh, Iron John. I've got, you know, oh, like, yeah. Iron John's a fantastic one. Understanding variation. I've got what else leading through change web of life. Like I'm like, where's my sales, all the sales stuff's here for display, but like subliminal, you talk about power habit, Charles Duhigg here. Have you ever read Shit subliminal? Ever. I haven't read subliminal. Is it good? Subliminals, dude, I hope I don't drop everything, but I'm going to show you this. <laughs> 
But this one, I don't know if you can see this, but if I turn it. I got it. But no, but see how I turn it? You can see the lettering? Yeah. So it says, hey there, yeah, you sexy. Buy this book now. You know you want it, right? That's what you see. <laughs> it's, it's in the, like, the shiny lettering. I don't know oh, I, can... I can't see that. Damn. Yeah, it's like you can't quite see. It's all down here, so it's just shiny of the exact same color. So you can't see it unless you turn it in the light. I can't show it on the camera. <laughs> That's it's rad, dude. But that one talks all about how subconscious rules fucking everything. Leonard Mladenov, a uh, really cool guy. Yeah. So I guess we should probably the, do a the podcast world, here. The world could use that right now, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. So, I mean, that's what I've studied more than anything is psychology and behavior development because, I mean, sales is sales. You know, like it's, you know, do the work, do the follow-up, and then it's all about energy. It's like mm. 10% of the words that you say in this process. You got to do the work, but don't be a shithead. But Oh, man. That, that last part, though, it sounds easy. Don't it be does, a right? You just, like, don't, that's why I say don't be a salesy weirdo. I spent it's all really my time being like, serious. that's weird. <laughs> it's, right? I'm like... Don't be shitty. <laughs> yeah. Like, and you, you know what's great? Actually, you know, you know Jordan Belfort, right? Wolf of Wall Street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Grant Cardone. Mm -hmm. he's, and so they did. I hate Grant Cardone. Um, but, like, uh, I've been watching him. I'm like trying to find, like, maybe it's my own judgment. Maybe it's my own, you know, Carl Young. What irritates us most? I'm like, no, he's irritating. And Trust so, and, yeah, and I'm like, yeah. So, but I watched Trust Jordan me. Belfort interview Grant Cardone on his podcast. And they went head to head. And Grant Cardone just, he lost a ton of credibility in everybody's eyes. Because he just, he just couldn't, he was just so hardcore just like douchey and that's his whole mentality it's the hustle the 10x mindset and i thought jordan belfort especially after watching the movie uh would be more of like that kind of style he's awesome he's completely reframed everything he does he's really good i and think he's on the he comeback too brother oh he's absolutely crushing it right now especially on youtube he's his energy what he's doing he's excited and everything he's doing is all about authentic and like you're like the way you do it he's like i don't want to screw people over that was never the intention it got fun <laughs> Like he's very honest about that and the drugs. I'm like, this guy's my spirit animal. And like, Literally. he just, he's, he's, I went right it. his footsteps. <laughs> oh, I'm going to just, everything right he's doing. <laughs> well, every, and then I'm, I'm going through building all my material. I was like, shit, I did that. I, I, I talk about all the same stuff. So now I have to do like, I'll be doing some reaction videos where I do like play by play. Here's what he's doing. Here's why this makes sense. I'll get on mm -hmm. his radar and I'll get on his podcast. That's my goal. Hell yeah. You're, and that will happen. And yeah. I can't wait to watch it. Um, oh, he's going to be good. He's you know legit. me, brother. I'm a big second, third chance guy. I, I don't believe that whatever you fuck up, however you mess it up, that your whole world should end and you should go jump off a bridge. I, yeah. There's a whole movement out there for that right now. You make a mistake, you're done. Oh, it's the cancel end. culture. Oh, Yeah. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. We all, we all make mistakes. And so um, yeah. to see him come back and do what he's done, and just real quickly, I know we got to record a podcast. Yeah, who knew? <laughs> I'm just going to edit this all back in. Here's our great gonna. <laughs> I'm just going to fly to Canada and we're just going to sit there and bullshit for about two days. Well, I'm going to um, buy so much cool. scotch and we'll just get it going, dude. When, when you should come in, man, we, we're great. We're right on the water here. We'll go for a kayak. We'll do our podcast on the kayak. It'll be great. Brother, and I, I, so I'm telling you this. I'm going to tell you two quick stories and then we're going to record a podcast. This yeah. will be very fast. <laughs> Uh, a really a guy that I used to he was a he was a senior level guy at my old firm and I was a partner so he was like four levels down from me and he right. we were sitting out having a drink he was having a bad night man and he goes I'm so thankful I get to go to Ty he's Taiwanese his name's Jimmy Lee and me my mom and dad and my sister were all going to Taiwan to visit family and and tour the country I'm from for three weeks I just need to get away and financial industry will chew you up man yeah and I'm like man that just sounds fucking awesome <laughs> and he goes he goes do you want to go I was like. Jimmy, I'm going to just tell you, you invite me, I show the fuck up. If I say yes, I'm going to be sitting next to your mom and dad on that plane flight to Taiwan. I went with them for three weeks to Taiwan. I love it. I show up, brother. So you tell me to come up and kayak, yeah, yeah, 100%. drink some whiskey. You I'm come here. over. I'm ready, man. Once all the bands lift, I'll get my address, 1075 Porter's Road, Victoria, BC. Get here. I'm in, man. <laughs> the second thing is uh, I know um, one of Grant Cardone's top salesperson was just let go by him for some really strange circumstances. And I know the truth's always in the middle. Um, but the stories, and I've gotten really close to this guy, just kind of mentoring him a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's, he, he was doing so well. Grant, all, all joking aside, makes a shit ton of money. Oh, no, I know. It pays no taxes because of the Scientology stuff. It's genius. 
he's borderline illegal, but genius. Yeah. Um, but this guy did so well and he, he had everything in it. You know, this is who I was, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm in the spotlight and he lost it all like that over some really strange, strange things. And, and the stories he tells about Grant. Whew, oh, I whew. bet. I bet, whew. man. He yeah. drinks his own Kool-Aid brother. And I don't ever want to be there. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've lived that world and thought I was something and I don't want to drink my own Kool-Aid. I, did, yeah. I want to walk the journey with you and do it humbly and, and influence people, man. So, yeah. Well, I mean, and you know, the one thing I do, I, I have to admire when something like, you know, I like we can get into all sorts of different things, but I want to watch personalities when people absolutely own what they're doing. Like Grant Cardone is completely, he's owning his thing. So I'm like, well, I'll give him that. <laughs> right. 100%. But it's not my style. I'm like, and I am like, my whole mission is to rid the world of salesy weirdos and get away <laughs> from this like sales bro mentality. Like I just see too many people, what's up everybody. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to crush it. We're going to close it. I'm like, that's not how humans work. I was like, you're just being a shithead. That's it. Right. Right. And that's right. why, like, you know, like I, you know, I like, like, I know like Jordan Belfort's story, but I'm like, mm. he's really trying to do it the right way. He's like, here's how it works, man. Here's how you, here's the psychology, here's the tools, here's the techniques. That's what he was pushing back on Grant Cardone. He was like, well, what's the process? What's the strategy? He's like, bro, there's no strategy. You just, you just got to go. You just got to yell at people. He's like, that's not a strategy. <laughs> he says, it was brutal. Right, so I'm just gonna yell at you. Yeah, I'm just gonna tell you buy now or, or until you buy from me. Right, <laughs> I love so, it, brother. I love it. Cool. So, um, you know, I as you will probably we're just gonna make it pretty casual for the podcast. I have your like intro um, is off your website. That's is that good enough to read for you? Or is there anything else you want me to add? I don't know what the hell it says. So sure. It says it says he loves Joe Girard and he supports everything <laughs> Joe Girard says. He's had a significant man crush on Joe Girard Absolutely. for about ten years. Duh. I love it. <laughs> okay, so Lindsay's I'll, I'll... sitting about uh, four feet that way, and she's dying laughing. By the way, because she's only hearing one side of this conversation. Oh, yeah, she's like, "What the hell? This guy? <laughs> what this are they doing?" <laughs> <laughs> We haven't even began recording yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Hey, real quick before we record, come say hello. Yeah, what's up? What's up? This is Lindsay the Great. Lindsay the Great. She is great. Is- she she threatened me last week. She's like, if you don't respond to my email, there's no podcast, buddy. <laughs> you got 24 hours. I was like, all right, yeah, we're doing it. <laughs> Damn, I didn't know all that. Oh, she she comes she comes hard, man. I'm like, I like her. So I'm gonna try and mm. scoop her. <laughs> <laughs> we just moved her here from minnesota so please don't okay no, you, can, you can keep her we got no room anyways i'm not gonna be working here longer or so i'll be working for ursula so it's good <laughs> you're gonna be working for your wife's ballet company yeah, anyway I, that's all i've been doing man it's editing her videos i built her a ballet she's bar built her all this office she, i'm crushing it for her it's great that's awesome nobody cares that's awesome <laughs> that's awesome I'm trying to sell nobody wants it they're like go sell ballet but and, and okay. forgive this it tastes a lot better than it looks, brother. Oh, what is that? It's a, it's a protein shake drink. I went for a run. I, I've gotten back into physical fitness because yeah. I, I got the COVID-19. Oh, the, and, yeah. Uh, I ain't drank everything that I could put my hands on. That's so good. And, uh, I, went and ran, I went and ran three miles a day. You know, it's like How are you a, feeling? Uh, not good. <laughs> <laughs> So my legs are like, yeah. fuck you, man. And so I'm putting as much protein in my body as I, I know, physically man. can at the moment. So forgive yeah. the weird no, that, looking drink. You call me out good, on it man. if you want to. No, I, yeah. <laughs> you know, I broke out. I broke out inaugural uh, the uh, stay, dream stage mug that we got in our packages. So I thought it was good. Oh, yeah, yeah brother. First time I've used it. I love it, man. Love it. Love there it. you go. Yeah, no, I went, I'm trying to get back into my fitness. I'm building the gym downstairs and I kept looking at it. I'm like, no, I don't want to do this. I had people at the beginning of the quarantine. They're posting like, does anybody have any free weights that I could borrow? I was like, in my head, I was like, no, I'm going to use these. Never. Right. <laughs> <laughs> They're justier than ever. <laughs> and I'm like, I walked 10 minutes. I was like, mm, that's not good. And I told them, <laughs> and you last time I, sorry again for canceling that. My dog's really sick, kidney disease. So her and I have the same amount of energy when it goes for walks we're like that's up the hill that's enough, enough. <laughs> <laughs> who's carrying who back to the house <laughs> so, man i had this old lab one time and i was walking to a coffee shop that was literally 200 yards from my house yeah i got halfway there and the person i'm meeting could see me and the dog just quit 
<laughs> <laughs> so I had to literally carry him to the coffee shop, a 70 pound Labrador oh I'm carrying God. him up to the coffee shop. But he ended up sitting there drinking water and he walked all the way back when they said, loved it. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic, man. Yeah. I get it, brother. <laughs> yeah. I've got two of them right by my feet right now. Oh, I, love it. I love it. That's cute, man. Um, Is the hound doing yeah. good by the way? She, you know what? She's, she's a beast. She's 14. She's just a little like mm. six pound. And we took her in to get her teeth fixed. Uh, because she said her teeth are bad. And so then they're like, I know she's got like stage four kidney disease. She's dying. So then we've been taking her for acupuncture with Chinese medicine and got her all these tinctures. And like, uh, we've got like, we, uh, every day we give her what's called a blast. We give her like, it's like fish oil, this greens, like just supplements. And so we've been doing that twice a day for the last number of months. And now she's healthy. She's better than ever. She's driving us crazy. And like, we thought one night she was dying because she was whimpering. We just thought she crawled into a corner. She was just stuck behind the toilet. Like, she's like, guys, I'm good. We're like ready to like, let's put her down. She's like, no, no, no. I'm just feeling not that good. <laughs> she's like, I feel great, guys. <laughs> Always re- like, and the doctor said that when she gets like that, she gets like, her body gets toxic. So it's kind of like when you're drunk and I'm like, oh, I know exactly what to do. So it's just hydration. <laughs> right? And then we got her on like, uh, we do like injections in her back subcutaneous. And so we do that. She feels great. And then she's like super energized. So I think she's going to be like hundred years old. She's a monster, it. man. I love it, man. Yeah. Congrats Six pound beast. We had, we had a Thanks. full-blooded lab. The feet, the, the male lived 14 years. That's the one that quit on me on the halfway yeah. walk. And the, the girl lived 16. Yeah. For a lab, a big dog, a full-blooded that's big, lab, yeah. that's a long time. And she was she was crushing it till about 15 and a half. So they yeah. can go, you know, especially with the alternative medicine you guys are doing, that's amazing. Yeah, we, and we've got, we've got a really cool uh, doctor. He's an Indian guy, does Chinese medicine, and both Western and uh, like traditional and, and, uh, and uh, in Chinese medicine. And he's really good, man. He's really holistic. And so he's doing stuff, and, he's tell, and he tells us all sorts of crazy stories. And um, But, yeah, like – it's really interesting. The dog's responding. Her coat's better than ever. And she's just like, she's a, she's a vampire now. She's up all night. She just That's wants awesome, to go man. do stuff. She just pees a lot. But yeah. So let's, uh, <laughs> you ready to rock it out? Let's do it, brother. Hey, man, I'm going to move your little description here. Do this, do that. So I can just focus on your beautiful face. Here we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm sure my wife could be hearing all this. Right? No, I'll, I'll send her. I'll send her this part. Oh my God, you're so amazing. He's so good to his wife. <laughs> Cares so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. You ready to rock? Let's rock, brother. Right, wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna move this here. Let's do this. So we've been recording the whole time. There might be some good outtakes in there. Oh, so we got we got some good stuff. <laughs> uh, let's do. I'm gonna move this because I like to read right in the camera. I don't really know what I'm doing, so let's figure this out. Here we go. <laughs> you got a badass studio, brother. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I look good. That's all that matters. <laughs> we can right. sit here in silence and look. Right? That's all we need to do. <laughs> okay. Ready? Let's rock and roll. Oh, man, am I ever excited about today's podcast, video podcast. I've got a beast from the East, right? He's, <laughs> he's uh, just crushing. I've been reading his book. We've got this guy here, Legendary which he is legendary. I have this. Make sure you grab that. Uh, Tommy Breelove, I'm so stoked that you're here, man. We've, we actually, it took us, what, 10, 15 minutes to try and get this started? Half an hour almost? Because we've been 32 just chatting minutes. 32 <laughs> minutes to get going. And so uh, let me do this intro. Let me do the pro intro. We'll get things rocking. So Tommy Breelove is a Wall Street Journal and USA Today best-selling author and Atlanta-based business relationship and mindset coach who's a regular feature keynote speaker at Global Events. He started his 20-year course corporate career at one of the largest financial consulting firms in the world and eventually became a shareholder, international practice leader, and a member of the board of directors for one of the largest public accounting and financial firms in the Southeast U.S. This is huge because of the transformation he made. Keep listening here. Top of his career, Tommy experienced a transformational moment inspiring him to walk away from the corporate world, huge, to change his life and follow his true calling. He now serves clients and audiences everywhere by empowering them to build and live legendary lives. I love that. He guides people discover a life of significance while building a lasting legacy the simple tools he shares shows them how to work in their zone of brilliance obtain financial confidence and live with meaningful meaning and balance and the goal is to help everybody become the person they've always wanted to be 
Um, you know, he, when he's not doing this, he enjoys traveling the world, hiking and spending quality time with his wife and two dogs. We just spent probably 15 minutes talking about dogs, but here's what I like <laughs> out of your book. Uh, this is what I thought. I, I was like, what is becoming legendary mean? There's right in the beginning of it. I, I just did a screenshot is about finding the balance between profitability and humanity between confidence and vulnerability, between working hard and having fun. Some legends are famous, but the vast majority are just like you and me, relentless in their pursuit of their passions. I love what you're talking about here, man. I was so excited when we got to connect the first time and now we finally get to do this. I'm pumped. I know it's a bit of a, a long intro, but man, all of that stuff is powerful in terms of where you started from, this crazy thing that you did, the psychotic break that you had to say, I'm going to go after this in a way more meaningful way. Um, and it's so, I think everybody's blessed that you've been able to make that move. So welcome. And let's, uh, let's dive in and get, get this thing kicked off, dude. Joe, I'm fired to be here. Fired up, man. And uh, thank you for that wonderful introduction. Thank you for the 32 minutes of just straight laughter before we even got on the air. So I'm super fired up to be here, brother. Appreciate yeah. you, man. More what do you, you want know. to talk about now? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do want to say this. There's something that popped in my brain that you just mentioned. We were talking about legendary. Let me tell you where the title came from. And yeah. You and I both know this in a world of constant Instagram, Facebook, YouTube fabulousness. We're all you know, putting our best stuff, our best face, and, you know, we want to look perfect to the world. If you and I, Joe, started calling each other legends, people would laugh us out of the room. Right. And so to me, legendary is something that's given to us by our peers, our society, our family, our cultures. And so you don't have to be, again, rich and fit, you don't have to be LeBron James or Wayne Gretzky to be a legend, but you and I could do it, but it's going to be given to us. It's, it's about leaving the people in this world a little bit better than we found them. And people won't read our resumes when we leave the world. They're going to they're gonna remember how we made them feel and the, the, the service that we did and, and the goodness that we put out in the world. So that's why we picked the word legendary is it's something given to us by society, man. Dude, I love that. You know, it's, it's, and that's, I think that's why anybody that's doing intros for people, or uh, we talk a lot about cross edification, the people you work with, your friends, your family, you know, it's, it's weird if you read that. <laughs> hey, let me tell you about how legendary I am. That's weird, but I think you're legendary and it's, it's really important uh, for me to make sure that people hear how legendary you are and what you're doing. And it's, and it's not just for you, but it's for everybody to go, wow, this feels good. This feels great. I mean, when we, uh, like I started a thing called the sales hero Academy. Um, and I remember getting up on stage and somebody's like, Joe considers himself a sales hero. I'm like, Nope, that's not at all what this is. <laughs> <laughs> and so right away people are like who's this guy I think he is I was like that's not at all what we're trying to do here <laughs> and so you can't call yourself a legend you can't call yourself a hero um it's but you need other people to lift you up and say that so I'm more than happy to call you a legendary brother I appreciate that brother like, you know you could get up on stage and say I'm gonna spend the next 60 minutes telling Joe talk about Joe and tell you yeah. how wonderful Joe is and we're gonna spend the last 10 minutes for you to tell me how great Joe is <laughs> that's it that's a great presentation I'm like how much did this cost <laughs> <laughs> oh I do appreciate it though man and 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 by no means do I uh I'm walking this journey every day I I walk it with the men and women in the masterminds who read the book yeah. it's just it's something I work on every single day of life I, I'm certainly no legend but brother I work my ass off to to hopefully one day when when my time is up and you know our our precious short time on this earth you know it just is and so hopefully my tribe my family my wife my colleagues the people who are in my stakeholder group hopefully they will remember me as a legendary who left this world a little bit better brother I love it baby well I I remembered you so <laughs> yeah the end right check in the box <laughs> yeah, that's it. thanks for listening everybody and that's the box. <laughs> I love it, brother. I yeah, love it. Man. This is attached. Otherwise, I drop it. I need a little slip <laughs> so I can drop the mic for me. But uh, you know what, man? Like, so l let me give you a bit of context here. So I, this this podcast, I call it Sales Hero Podcast. Uh, I don't think I'll change that name because I think what, and it's not just focused on sales. This is all, this is, uh, you know, legendary, her, her, heroic. All of these words are basically, what are you doing to, again, just like you said, leave a mark, leave a legacy, do something that makes an impact without being like I got here. Where is it there? Don't be a salesy weirdo, right? Like this, the whole thing, you know, I love that you come from 
a high level corporate background, like you've, you've seen the numbers, you've done the stuff. You're not somebody who was a, a bartender and then became a life coach. You know your things and you work with some really, really big projects, especially right now. And I'm really interested how, as we go through this, like I want to tie this back into how people can go after and achieve their goals and achieve, you know, the monetary things that they think are important, but how we can tie in the spirituality, um, the habits, um, really thinking about, you know, taking control of yourself and your motivation and your relationships. I love, you know, you talk about your relationship with uh, your wife, Heather, right? And just what you guys are doing, it really, it means a lot to me and what, what me and my wife are doing. So all of that, that's what I want to be able to tie in today is how we're connecting the stuff that people think matters to the stuff that actually matters. I love that, man. And, you know, when we, real quickly on sales, you know, we're all selling every moment of every day of our life ourselves in some way because we all want to be seen heard loved valued uh, we all want to be free we all want to be safe but seen heard loved and valued we put a lot of importance on so we're always selling ourselves and hopefully we're doing it with some honesty some authenticity i know those are bug words and some vulnerability right they're and good so, words <laughs> that's why they're, they're, i hate that's that why they use them. Buzz words, right but they're good yeah. words <laughs> You know, Ryan Holiday says that's cliche. Well, the reason it's cliche is because it is a beautiful statement. Yeah. And um, for me, brother, it's interesting you said I wasn't a bartender that became a life coach. You talk about um, – so it's – I never, ever in a million years thought I would write a book, be coaching people with business money, mindset, relationships, yeah. be on stages. I never in a million years thought that. I had zero intention of doing that. But I went through this massive transformation at 36. You and I talked offline about the Wolf of Wall Street and how yeah. he, in his life, has turned the madness and the chaos and the craziness into something beautiful. And he's helping so many people yeah. now. Money, mindset, all these other things. Same thing kind of happened to me is I followed in his footsteps, brother. And <clears throat> when the money, the power, the fame, the big paycheck, the corner office, I had checked all those boxes. When that didn't fill me up, I turned to everything else. I mean, literally everything else. Cause I just wanted to be powerful and mean something and thought this is what, you know, I come from very humble beginnings. <clears throat> and so when that, and I found myself laying in a ditch, looking at the sky, half dressed, didn't know where my car was downtown Atlanta in the Southeast United States and wondering how the hell did I get here? <clears throat> and my next step was probably going to be death. I was probably doing some multi-million dollar financial audit or merger and acquisition deal the week before. And brother, when I went through this transition and I said, you know what? No more. I'm going to make my physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional well-being my full-time job. And dude, the most amazing things happened to me. What I thought was a lot of money. I went from junior partner to senior partner to international practice leader to elected to the board of directors in three years. The rest of those dudes and gals were like 60 years old, almost all of them. And here I am at 39 yeah. in the boardroom. But I had shifted. It wasn't about money, power, fame, important guy, tough guy, you know, can't ask for help guy. It was just about being Tommy, like Eminem with the, you know, the real Slim Shady, please stand up, you know, with the real Tommy's, please stand up. Yeah, yeah. And when I did that, man, my community, and this is, this is where people who, I think people want to live a life of significance, of fulfillment, peace of mind, less stress, but they don't want to do that without compromising their ambition and success. But brother, I went from working 90 hours a week to 80 hours a week, 70 hours a week, down to 35. I invested in me every single day because I believe we have to invest in ourselves. And we'll go deep into that here in a second, talking about habits and mindset and all that other stuff. But when I started doing that, the returns in my relationship with my wife, my network, my money, and I had no intention of leaving the firm. It's just 10x, man. We talked about Grant Tardone earlier. Yeah. I don't know if we, we needed to talk about that. But, um, <laughs> but it really did happen in my life just by being an honest, listening, authentic human instead of mm -hmm. this, this facade, this insecure guy that yeah. was. And so with that being said, all of these executives, lawyers, bankers, um, people who own their own company, my tribe that I was helping with in the financial world, they started reaching out to me and they're like, look, man, I don't know what you did. Whatever <laughs> drug you're taking, I want it. Yeah, you know, you're like whatever, limitless. What, yeah. tell, me, tell me what I can do to get what you've got. Because I was happiest I've ever been. My relationship was great. My money was off the charts. And about the 10th or 15th person, and I started taking them through what I went through and how I did it. And I saw the results in their lives. And that ultimately became this book, Legendary. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I knew there was something. It was the most fulfilling thing I'd ever done. So I literally went to chase this dream, dropped the mic, 
and uh, went out into the world. There was a, there was a, there was something in the beginning that was called choose goodness. That's still there that I was really passionate about, but the, the, the road signs were, man, you need to be coaching people, mindset, relationship, money, mindset, relationship, money, help them to be the best business people and people they could possibly be. And brother, it was the best. It was the hardest decision. 60% of my income went out the door Boom. <laughs> overnight, yeah. overnight, top line revenue, 60%. My wife's like, um, and so, uh, at the end of the day, man, from purpose to significance to what I thought was a lot of money to success, to happiness, there's nothing better than serving your he- fellow beings and helping mm-hmm. them find purpose and conquering time and meaning and better relationships. Brother, so the community found me. I didn't find them. Yeah. And, and I, luckily, I had so many great mentors and coaches. Still do. Still have a coach. Still have a mentor. Still in a mastermind. And I run all those things, too. Yeah. But to me, it's about starting, investing in yourself, all phases of your life, so that you can go serve your families and communities better. And I'll get off my, my diatribe now, but I want no, to no, share no. the backstory this, of how here. it happened. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear me. They, but you know what? The I one do. thing, yeah, let's just, we'll take that offline, man. <laughs> no, that's, it's so cool. One, one thing you, I know, like in your book, the big thing that stuck out to me is you talk a lot about male mentors, right? Uh, like your father-in-law and different people that have really made an impact for you. And I think that's kind of, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, there's a lot of people that don't have that. They don't. And then finding you and going through finding somebody legendary to help them, you know, to be able to just be a sounding board, especially like, you know, I was part of a a group called the brotherhood. Uh, You know, it's not weird, but it was like a bunch of guys that really supported each other and lift each other up the rules. There were specific rules that we had to follow, but it was amazing to be a part of a really well-connected group of guys. And we all mentored each other. And it was such a tight knit group that, um, you know, that male energy is something, something very special. I remember like I went to Wisconsin to go visit a couple of the guys and they, you know, picked me up from the airport. Um, and it was like, we, I mean, we never met, but it was instant, like just switched on, right. You know, having that, that strength and like, not just success, but like really strength and powerful stuff. That's why I like what you talked about with male mentors, um, mm-hmm. that in there. And I think, you know, uh, my, que- so I want you to go into that, but also my question that, that, that I have is that, you know, you, I think for people that, might be listening, say they're executives, they're in sales, they're people that have that, that mindset of, you know, what success is. And they're, tr- they know deep down that they want to break through that. They know that something's missing. Like what you said, what are like, my thinking is when the people come to you that talk to you, what do they typically come to you for? And what's usually the thing that they actually need when they talk, right? So like that this- That is a I, hell I wanna, yes question, by dude, the way. Right? By the way, so if you I, read the book, you'll know what I'm saying when I say hell yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So de- definitely get the book, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, that, that's my thing is just the male mentor thing. And then what do people say they need and what do they really need? I'll start with the male mentor thing. Um, gentlemen, I'm just going to say this. Um, first of all, your definition of success is not wrong, but there's more to it you know, big houses and cars and nice watches. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with that. I say, go get it, go work for it, work your ass off. I came from nothing, had all those things, can get them. But to me, it's about experiences in life and impact and how do we, how do we leave a life of significance? But there is nothing greater. We men, we've got to stop this. I can't ask for help nonsense. Mm. I've got this nonsense because you're going to die on that white horse. <laughs> <clears throat> we crave respect, but we need connection. And I'm in a group of men called the nine now. And these are some, some highly motivated, ambitious people, but we hold each other accountable. We kick each other in the face when we need to, but we love each other and support each other unconditionally. And there is nothing more powerful than having nine other men in your corner to talk about love, to talk about the tough things in relationships, to talk about, Hey man, I'm scared as hell to talk about, Hey man, what if they figure out I really don't know what I'm doing? (laughs) So the, the key is you're not alone. But finding that tribe, finding that group of people that are going to lift you up. And as Jim Rohn said so wisely, somebody, you are the five people you spend the most time with. Yeah. These men make me better in all fronts. So with that being said, <clears throat> and there's mentors all around you. You just got to seek them. And a mentor, by the way, can be in a book. It could literally mm-hmm. be in a book. I look so much up to certain certain great figures in the past, uh, Alexander Hamilton's, the MLKs of the world. I mean, there's just so many men and women that you can find in books too. So with that being said, so men, because of my business background, um, 
you know, they're coming to me to help them make a big, you know, a lot of these guys own their own companies or their partners in their firm, or they're aspiring to get there. They're pretty close. Yeah. And um, they come to me to help them be better leaders, ultimately to make more money, to someone to lean on, um, to ask for help when they get there, to know they don't have it all figured out because they've heard from another man that, hey, this guy can really knows his shit. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> that's what they come to me for is power, money, leadership, more success. They 100% need help in their relationships with their significant others, with their children, their friends. They all struggle with time. Um, a lot of these guys are very ambitious, driven, motivated dudes, and they find themselves looking up at the sky and asking, why the hell am I here? That's lacking purpose. Um, they can't figure out why they're overwhelmed, why they're stressed, why they're unfulfilled. Um, you know, I've got guys in my stable. Truth, truth, this is truth. I got guys in my stable that are nine-digit guys, and I'm not kidding. Um, no Bs, but several nines. But I got guys just coming up, and they all struggle. There's this, I could give you the data now of what people need. We all struggle with the am I enoughs. We all struggle with that voice inside our heads that says you're not good enough. And that voice is lying to you. <clears throat> we all struggle, men especially, unconditional love for ourselves, receiving love from someone else, especially, you know, our wives, our girlfriends, or even our buddies, truly receiving love. But we struggle with self-confidence, self-respect, unconditional. I'm talking to even the nine-digit guys. They struggle with self-confidence, yeah. self-respect, unconditional love but a hundred percent in some level want to be better fathers, husbands want to have more sex. I'm just throwing it out there. We want to be better in all those departments, but ultimately originally they come to me for success, better leadership to, to, to be better than they were on the business front and money front, but they all need better love mindset and relationships a hundred percent. And now what's cool about, because so many of these, I'll call them alphas or, or aspiring alphas, um, but what's cool now is a lot of the guys that are coming in my door now, it's not about money. I've had, a, I had a brand new client over this, that we're recording this during COVID Yeah. over a COVID said, man, I just want to be a better father and a better husband. Go. I was like, we got this. When someone comes to me, then that's how I know we're many. That's how I know this message of dying on the white horse. It's all about money, power. And this, again, I love all those things, man. It's fun. I mean, it's, uh, chase those goals. Go after them because they, they Indeed. need to It makes think, the world right? better. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a capitalist at heart, dude. Like, like I always say, like, I'd be, too, I'd, be, I'd be so good in a soup kitchen, not the best place for me to work, <laughs> right? Like, it's go totally, and, brother. So, yeah. So, I think we have a duty to go and, and do this, right? It, you know what's crazy about that is, is, and I say this in the book, and this was taught to me by someone else, and I honestly can't remember who, who said it. Maybe even Sarah Blakely, who's here in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. But I think she said this, but you know, if I'm misquoting, forgive me. But well, what she I, said, I'll, just I was edit like, it. I'll, bleep, I'll bleep it out and put it over top. <laughs> and this is what he said. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to give her credit for it. So how about that? Um, yeah. But she was so right because I lived it. Yeah. You know, if you're an asshole with a lot of money, you're just going to be a big asshole yeah. doing a lot of bad shit with your money. Yeah, man. If you're someone who wants to be of service and make impact and live a life of significance, that making a lot of money and employing a lot of people is going to take that to the stratosphere. So I say I'm a capitalist at heart too. One on one, you can ask my team. I'm very <laughs> passionate about that actually. Yeah. Because I love the opportunity. I love that anyone can pull up their bootstraps with enough hard work and love good guidance and love investment themselves. You can have anything. I literally come from very humble beginnings. And I was taught as a young boy not to believe in himself. Not res literally my goal job as a, if you would ask me as a young boy, because I wanted to be Dominique Wilkins for the Atlanta Hawks. That didn't work for me because I wasn't good <laughs> enough. So my plan B was literally to drive a Coca-Cola truck. And I'm not knocking that. But that's where my frame of reference, I saw it as gotcha. a good job, a stable job. I looked up to those guys and there's nothing, I'm not judging that at all. But from a little boy who thought that was going to be the top of his pinnacle to becoming whatever he wanted to be, it's a big mindset shift, brother. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. Yeah. You know, it reminds me like speaking of whatever job it is that talking about relationships and love and family, our old neighbors, uh, Joel and Pam, they, uh, you know, Joel was a high end, like a uh, fine dining chef and he just got sick of doing that. And so he went back and he was being, he was doing welding. And so Hell everybody yeah. was like, dude, like what, 
what do you do? And like, go open your restaurant, do something like this. And he was like, no, man. And even for me, as like a, you know, coach. I was like, I can show you exactly what to do. We can do this. He's like, I don't want to do it because, you know, me and him and his wife, uh, they had sort of kind of been struggling with their stuff. And so he just said, I'm going to do this. So I don't have to think about anything about my relationship. And when we talked about that one night, I don't know, we had a few drinks and I was like, dude, this is really like, I never really thought like, so, like everybody thinks you can do more, but you're choosing not to because you set your priorities. That's one thing I love about what you talk about. But since then, I like about a year that after that, so much, and I'm like, whatever your job is, like it's, he set his priorities. That's what he wanted to do. Right. And then a year after that, he came to me, he's like, okay, so guess what? I'm opening a restaurant. <laughs> and uh, I ended up doing the mentorship for them and they've been running their restaurant successfully. It's been a big transition. They did it together, but just that whole idea, like, like that was really something that was an eye opener for me is just seeing somebody that they're not chasing bigger and bigger goals. You don't have to, because they had a very specific priority and the goal that they had. And then the other, so it was really, really, um, you know, when I see people that are living, you know, if they're, if they're not living their best life, you know, whatever that means, then they can, they can work on those things, but it doesn't mean your best life is that you're doing the most with your career and money. It means Amen. Out, yeah. So that's why I really like what you talk about is like, you know, if you want to chase the goals, the money goals, do it. If you don't, don't. I love that. <clears throat> and I say that he found his purpose during that season of life. Mm -hmm. He made a choice and that's something we all have. People think, we're in control. We're in control of nothing but our choices and our mindset. Yeah. He made a choice because his relationship was struggling. He was probably stressed as hell, overwhelmed. <clears throat> and he said, enough is enough. I'm going to make my wife, possibly his family. I don't know his total situation, but I'm going to make my relationships my number one priority. I'm going to work in this craft. He probably enjoys welding a lot. There's a, that's a craft. That's creation. That's, loves that's it, creating yeah. with your sand. He's a chef, so he likes to create. He's a well, creator. the restaurant right now uh, uh, during COVID stuff, uh, they, they paused it and he went back to do welding projects. He loves it. He loves this creating. This guy's a god, he, man. Oh, he's, this guy's yeah, a god in my book. He is, he's awesome. But he found so his cool. purpose during that yeah. season. And whatever your priority is, is it family? Is it a sick kid? Is it going back to school? Is it figuring out what your purpose is? Is it going to make a bunch of money and, and build a great business and be an entrepreneur? Does it really matter? Just go do it in your choices. Don't listen yeah. to what they, whoever the hell they are, say anyway. And that dude, he had a lot of pressure. What are you doing? Why aren't you cooking? Why aren't you this, you're this famous chef? And he's like, brother, I'm just going to do me and I'm going to do our relationships and I'm going to fall back in love and then we'll figure out what happens. He yeah. found his purpose during that season of his life. I love Badass it. in my book, brother. It's so good. I mean, it's, it's, and just, yeah, just watching them just go through that. It's so good. You know, the, um, the other thing you mentioned about, <laughs> what's that? I want to meet him. <laughs> oh, you will. When you come, you're going to come over here. We're drinking whiskey. He's going to come over. He's going to cook for us. Ooh, baby. Ooh. Yeah, they're awesome. Hell yeah. The, um, you know, when, when you talk about like, um, you know, the, the group of guys that I, uh, that I was with, I remember the, like, there was a, the, one of my favorite conversations that was in one of our Facebook groups. This guy was like, listen, I'm a mega millionaire and I think I have it all figured out and I have this awesome model girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. And now she's leaving me for a billionaire. What am I doing wrong? Right. And it was like, all the guys were like, screw her, man, that guy. And they were just like, it turned into like, just it, the, the money and like the status didn't matter anymore. It was just a group of guys being like, you deserve this and that and this. And I just remember just like the aha where I'm like, it doesn't matter how many zeros are there it's the same challenges. Like you said, the guys having issues with relationships and I doubled down on our relationship to be like, you know, let's like, this is all I can really value more than anything. If I don't do this right, like what's it all for? Right. And so we, I mean, we've struggled, we struggled to try and figure this out. And especially I know Ursula's back in building her business now and just seeing her light up with this newfound sort of purpose. Oh, it's fantastic. It's beautiful, man. And at the yeah. end of the day, um, all the money in the world. If we come home to a big empty house and drive a car that no one sits in and have all these things, no one experiences, that's not living. So living's about love. Living's about loss. You can't have love without loss. Living's about winning and suffering. It's about winning and losing, but it's also about experiencing life and more money will help you experience life. But you know that you want someone next to you or beside you or with you, friends, family, and a significant other to walk that path with you. And at the right end of the day, what I would say to that particular gentleman, if you've really looked within and you're doing the hard work to develop that unconditional love and respect for yourself, to master that mindset and to cultivate intimate relationships, he'll attract the right person in his yeah. life. 
there was something that he was attracting and I'm not, I, you know, I don't know her. I can't, I can only talk to the specific man. Cause I, yeah. I know a lot about men, <laughs> yeah. uh, but there was something that he was vibrating to put that out there. He was doing something that she was attracted to that thing and not him. Mm -hmm. And when she found the shinier thing, which we all I, guilty as charged, I've been there. I've done yep. it, done it. I, you know, I've chased a lot of shiny things in my day. Um, but that guy looking within and doing some deep work, he'll get yeah. the woman of his dreams, no matter Absolutely. what. That's where you got to watch out for the predators. The more successful you get, the sharks and scorpions and the haters and the people trying to bring you down and use you and manipulate you. And, you know, again, some of these higher level clients I've got, they've got to have a fortress because everybody's trying to have an edge on them, not having a real conversation with them. Yeah. So it's, it's an interesting thing that you have, we have to be on the lookout for as you yeah. rise to the top. I mean, look at any great athlete or CEO or business guy or people we look up to, right? Someone's always trying to tear them down. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's that's on a tangent there. Sorry about that. No, no, no. It's good because it, it is, you know, as you start to do things, it's, you know, there's, there's the two parts you talk about, you know, the not being good enough. But then once you start to get past that, then pe and you start to succeed, people are like, mm, Oh, I want to let you know, you're not good enough. So like, you break through that big barrier of like, Oh, I can finally do it. And then people try and tear you down. They look for shortcuts to undermine the thing that you worked really fucking hard to build or something you did in 1981. Yeah, and, like that's yeah. This, yeah, the cancel culture. We were talking about that. Let me tell you what happened to me. Um, and you talk about close to home is I had, almost as close as family member. I'm just going to say who they were, but it is a super close family member. And I have a very small family. When I started having success, when the book became a USA Today and Wall Street bestselling journey, we started doing these podcasts. We started getting our name and word out there and our mission out there to help people. I literally get this two page drunken text telling me I'm a fraud. My marriage is a scam. I'm a liar. None of that is true. And I'm like, man, these are people supposed to love and support you the most. Yeah. And we just got to remember pain likes pain, darkness likes darkness, but light likes light. And as long as we're out there kicking ass and doing the best we can to make impact, we just got to let all that other stuff go, man. It still hurts though. Fuck yeah, it hurts. Yeah. Sorry, am I allowed to say that on the show? <laughs> yeah. Fuck, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah, yeah I didn't say it didn't hurt. Yeah. I didn't say it didn't hurt, brother. It, yeah. it hit straight into the DNA, soul right. level hurt. Yeah. But it, you know, here's the thing, and we talked about this a little bit, and I don't want to go down this rabbit hole. But again, who we surround ourselves, we can't choose our family, but we can certainly choose our friends and significant other. And so setting boundaries with negative, you know, we, again, if you can't see the crazy person in your family, you are it. But we've <laughs> Ooh, all got right, those family members. <laughs> we love them. We love them, but we got to set that boundary because they're just yeah. not, it, they're just not doing the work that we're doing to be the best that we can be. Yeah. And you know, I like that. We've done a lot of work with that on boundaries. Cause as we grow, you know, we um, are looking for other things. We're not, it's not a, you know, better than, or like different. It's not a comparison. It's not a chat. It's not a, you know, it's not a challenge. It's not pride. It's, it's not, not pride. pride, but you know, we, I expect better things for myself. So I expect better things from the people around me, not because of what I want, but what I want for them, what they deserve to be. And so when we set boundaries, when we set these the expectations for our staff, for our friends, our family, relationships whatever it is you're actually trying to lift them up they're learning by example we're not trying to bring them down tell them they don't meet your standard it's like they're not meeting their standard and if they can't grow through that then it's unfortunately it's just not people that you can grow with well said brother and I, i'll take it just one look I, I couldn't say anything better than that but i'll add this to it when you start the work when you start investing yourself professionally your mm -hmm. mental state, your emotional state, your spiritual state, you start reading the books, you start surrounding yourself with good people. You and I both probably have coaches in our lives that we pay. Yeah. You know, when we start doing the work, it's climbing the mountain and our view changes, our perspective changes, our expectations change of ourselves. So therefore it changes of others. And the people who aren't doing any of the work who either look up to you or try to tear you down, it's because they're standing on the ground and they can't see what we can see. And here's the weirdest thing is it's almost like our language to ourselves and others change. And we start speaking, you know, French and Spanish, and they're still speaking English. We can still understand them, but they can't understand us. And so oh. it's just weird how once you do this work, self-improvement, business books, self-development, coaches, investing in yourself to be the best you can be, that's all you want around you. And it's not – pride it's not ego it doesn't mean i still love all those people literally unconditionally but they're not going in the same direction i'm going yeah 
And it's, we, I mean, this is definitely a tangent we can get on to, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of, you know, stuff, especially right now with a lot of the stuff going on in the world. I see there's a lot of small mindedness, small mindedness uh, that I'm uh, seeing. And I don't see people rising above the thing that's happening today, not putting it into perspective, very reactionary behavior. The other thing that I saw, you know, this is actually something we can jump into. We should, well, I, we can do whatever we want, but it's my show. What do you mean you can't do it? This is my show. I can't wait to, I can't wait to record on that kayak with some whiskey. <laughs> We're going to crush it. Be like, and then no holds barred, right? <laughs> the, um, so the, the, the thing that I've seen is, you know, right now with, you know, COVID and with the pandemic, the quarantines and people just sort of becoming very like insular. I think uh, people took this opportunity to be very selfish and be like, well, how do I take care of me and my family first and screw everybody else? Because they got really afraid. If this was the end of the world, yeah, that's that's fine. But now we're coming out on the other side, and people are like, oh, I kind of was not very nice to people, and I didn't really do, I didn't support people. And you know, I know like it, when something like this happens, this is the ultimate time to go to to war with your friends and family side by side, lift each other up. So I doubled down on supporting, like you know, building Facebook groups, helping people with software and systems and tools. You know, a lot of reciprocity built through this time because I know like, you know, on the other side of it, people remember how you helped them through the tough times. But I saw a lot of people really just disappear. And this was the worst time to disappear. So maybe t talk about that and sort of what you what you're seeing. Complete worst time to do that. And, and here's I'm gonna, I'm not defending those actions. I'm just gonna explain them from someone who's been doing this now for as long yeah. as I've been doing it Absolutely. is, I don't think it was malicious. And I don't no, I just think no. it, I think it was unconscious fear too. And I think right, yeah. the fear, the constant garbage in from our press and social media, the pressures that come with that, people close. And we're not built to handle all that negative messaging. And, you know, we can't, there's, there's, there's only, we can only do us and those around us and influence and inspire as best we can. But there's those that run to the fire and there's the, those that run away from the fire. Mm -hmm. What you describe is those people who come to serve. You know, we, okay, we saw an opportunity to help our fellow. I can't tell you how many free Zoom hour to an hour and a half speeches, calls, inspiration, motivation for large corporations, for groups yeah. of men, for groups of women, just because I wanted to be of service. And I just wanted to, I wanted to interact. I, I crave connection. I'm an extrovert. So I need people. I need people around and, and I respect you. If you want to go hide and, and hide in your house for the next 10 years, do it. I, I got nothing but love for you, but there's people that will walk to the fire and there's people that walk away from the fire. We need community. We need our tribe. We need connection. And more than ever, we need to serve our fellow humans the best we can right here, right now, today. And there's so much darkness out there. There's so much fear mongering out mm -hmm. there, shaming, there's a lot of shaming. Happening. Shaming, you're yeah. Not, you're not with us. You're against us. And no matter you're what you do, telling me to hate my neighbor next door. Yeah. I'm like, I don't. I, no, I don't want to hate Joe. I like Joe. Joe's well, good you dude. say, and they say, you, you know, <laughs> stand with us, or you're against us. And then you stand with them. You're like, you have no business standing here. Like, I don't yeah, know where shame. to stand. Right? Like, shame and fear. Yeah, that's not love. But that's 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 just that's unconscious. It's not malicious. It's meant to help. But for all of us, and trust me, for a kid who grew up extremely bullied and with yeah. a lot of abuse, I became what I hated. I became the bully. Yeah. We've got to make sure that when we get a voice and we get power, that we're coming from love. We're coming from compassion. We're coming from service. We're coming from a place of solution. MLKs, Gandhis, Joan of Arcs, yeah. the great spiritual leaders of the greatest religions of all time. All love, service, compassion, empathy listening, balance, um, perspective. And so we've got to watch the shaming. We've got to watch the bullying. We've got to watch the fear mongering. We got to turn all that off and we got to go to love and service. And I think people will always remember the way you treated them. Yeah. And, and I'm a, I'm a big believer of that. Especially when they're in a place of fear and shame and, and uncertainty, this is a time where we can lift them up. Um, so you're drinking your swamp water. That's delicious. And <laughs> I just this is my attempt to lose the COVID-19, brother. Right? No, no. <laughs> no, I remember before we started, he said, hey, don't worry about what this is. And I just couldn't wait for you to pick it up. 
I'm just thankful my teeth aren't green. Right, just, I think we're on video. You, yeah, it's just all over your face, right? Um, you know what? I, let's let me let me just transition that because I think you know, like this is uh, I think it's still called the Sales Hero Podcast. So, <laughs> but you know what? This is why something that is so so powerful. I remember we talked about like Jordan Belfort. I was watching one of his videos. He talks about tonality, body language, and the words that you use. And mm. tonality and body language make up like 45 and 45, and the words are 10 percent of what actually matters because I can help you write a perfect script. Like I know what words will communicate, but it's that little bit of mm, that, that gives you the edge over everybody else. It's your intention. It's that body language. It's the tonality. It's the subliminal way you communicate to people. And so that's why everything we've talked up to about up until now is a hundred percent. What constitutes the 90%, I'm just using percentages, a hundred percent of the 90% of the, of the 90% of what matters when we're selling, when we're building our business, is knowing that these people out there are afraid, they're uncertain, they're, they're trying to figure things out. Everybody, nobody has the answer. Everybody tells you you have the answers, they're out of their minds, right? Mm -hmm. so, so what you've said so far is amazing. Now I wanna transition that into how do we translate that to, because you guys grow, grow your business, you sell, you bring on clients, you help people with sales teams, you help people increase their revenue. All of this stuff we're talking about, how, does, how do we then apply this into the way we show up when we're selling, the way we communicate when we're selling, and the way we serve our audience when we're selling? I love that question. And to me, you, you, you said it best right at the beginning. It's, um, A, to, to me, the most important thing is developing, cultivating self-confidence something as simple as head up, shoulders back, head up. You know, you can't be slouching. People oh, don't sorry. want to buy from you if you're, you know what I'm saying? But you've got to, All right, up, fine, I'll back. Be <laughs> but there's tools and skills and we don't have to go through them here yeah. to build self-confidence, to build, I've got this, even when sometimes you don't think you've got it, but there's all sorts of tools and skills. And this is a, this is going to sound a little woo woo, but it is legit. If you don't think it's just legit, I'm going to, hopefully I can explain this. Your energy matters. It doesn't matter if it's on the phone, on this video, especially one-on-one, -on -one. you're vibrating. They can feel you. There's science that says your heart, literally by the time your brain picks up what your heart has felt, your heart's gone around the, the world about 20 times before your brain even, so they can feel you. If you don't think I'm true, think about that relative that you've got that walks into the room and the whole room lifts up. That's what I'm talking about. That it's your energy. So you've got to come in with high energy positive energy. I've got this. And there's all sorts of work you can do around that. Um, but to me, at the end of the day, it's not saying I have all the answers. Mm -hmm. It's not because there's, there's so many great coaches out in the world. There really is. There's so many great sales trainers and sales coaches out in the world. They're really good. It's just about people by people. And do I have a connection with you? Do I relate to you? Are you trying to be a guru and say, you know, it all? Or are you trying to stand next to me and say, Hey, I'm gonna walk this journey with you. And we're gonna figure it out together. And so to me, it's about, that's authenticity. It's vulnerability. I think one of my gifts, brother, when it comes to selling is giving these men and women the gift of going second. When I open up about my struggles, my insecurities, my fears, and on the outside, brother, I looked as successful as you could possibly be, especially where I came from. But on the inside, I was crumbling. I was scared. I was insecure. I was worried. And it came out with all these fake masks. But when I share that with them, you start seeing the, the, the onion peel peel back. And you're like, hey, this guy walks this journey. He's not some guru or psychologist. He's, he's not a professor. He does this. He walks this damn walk. Yeah. And I think that connection, I think people crave connection. I think they crave confidence. On some level, they want to be told everything's going to be okay. But I don't have the, all the answers, but we're going to figure it out together. So I think from energy to cultivating self-confidence to practicing your craft brother i i can't i can tell by just talking to you how much you've practiced your craft i spend with my coaches my like the coaches that i pay the masterminds that i pay to be in yeah. a constant reading of books and experimenting with stuff on myself and others i'm just constantly in the craft i am just becoming i want to become world class in my craft so i practice i practice i practice every day nothing in life comes without practicing so I think I, I, that was a whole ton I just threw at you. No, that's good. And you know what? To just, me, that's, in, that's sales to me. Yeah. And in what you're saying, like the, I, the thing that I like about, I think where we, where we really resonate on that is that you're practicing your craft nonstop 
and also feeling like it's never enough. Like there's always more you can be doing. You're very humble in the way that you learn. You're very, you, your intent uh, with what your intention, with what you're doing, the, the ability that you, um, you're always um, willing to learn. Like you said, going second, but you're like, oh, there's like you mentioned earlier, like, uh, you know, your guru or your men mentor can be a book. Like, that's what I feel like. There's these people like, I, you know how hard it is to write a book. So this guy, Leonard Mladenov, he went through the same journey you did. And if I just breeze through this and don't apply it, that is not why he wanted to write that book. <laughs> That's like a, right. just the worst gift I could give an author is to be like, yeah, yeah, I've heard it before. Right. Yeah. And so there's, you know, like that's the same thing, practicing your craft, uh, what you're talking about in sales. Like, there, you know, I think, you know, people, when they hear when you say it's like the woo woo thing, it's I remember years ago when I like I was very similar where I thought I knew it all. And then I ran into a guy, this guy, Shigenori, cool little Japanese guy. He was a spiritual coach and he, I was helping him with some of his stuff. He's like, do you want to do some sessions? I was like, nah, not really. I don't know what that means. And we did. All, we spent three years every week doing spiritual work, not mm. religion, but just checking ego, vulnerability, insecurity, just breaking me down every week, being like, oh my God, this is crazy. Just seeing like the pace and the way that I thought. And I know like if I get up, I get up on stage, you know, a couple thousand people, I speak about sales. The moment I bring up the stuff about the spiritual work, like you said, I give them the permission to go, oh, anytime I ever bring that up after a session, people come up and say, hey, can you tell me about that spiritual stuff you talked about? They all want to know about that. They don't 100%. care about the five-step thing to do the thing. I can, I can tell there's lots of steps and lots of ways, but they all go, how do I not be out of my mind? That's, the, mm -hmm. that's why I really like the work that you're doing because it's, if people, it's just that one switch where they go, oh, that's actually what I need help with. That's why I'm, you know, I, I'm really curious about that work that you do, especially on the sales side where people, if they unlock this piece, what's possible? I love it, man. And people want, people want you to be relatable, you know, on the stage in, I speak a lot too. You want to be ordinary and extraordinary. You want to be ordinary yeah. and Hey, I've struggled with this honest, vulnerable. Hey, this is my hero's journey mm -hmm. because you're going to, we're all the same insecurities, fears, not good enough, need to be loved, seen, heard, valued, all of that. We all got it. We just like to cover it up with all these masks. And when you just get down and real, like I, you know, I'm going to give them do these three things. They're not going to remember those three things. They're like, man, that whole, just, uh, how do I get that voice inside my head that won't shut the hell up? How do I yeah. get it to shut the hell up? You know what I'm saying? Cause we all have that voice. Yeah. And so, um, I think it's relatability, extraordinary, ordinary, um, again, it's connection, connection, connection too. And are you up there screaming at people? We talked about that offline. <laughs> or if you, are you up there serving people? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Are you, are you relating to people, you know, by getting out of your private jet and saying you can have one of these? Or are you better served by telling them where you started and yeah. how, how you got to the jet? Because that's how they, they want to get there. They don't want to look at the jet and say, how do I get that jet? They want to know the journey to get there. And the, and the stuff that made you afraid that could have stopped you. Amen. Right? The, the stuff that like it was a roadblock, it was a landmine and maybe you didn't solve it, but somebody helped you solve it. But Blind you went, spot. oh my God, I've been a douchebag for all these years. <laughs> like I know when I talk to people about being like on, on video, when I first started trying to do YouTube, my wife came in and she's like, you sound like a marketing douchebag. And I was like, Oh, thank God you told me. Cause I was like, Hey everybody today, I want to talk to you. And she's like, no, that is not how you sound. Right. And I've spent like six, seven years. You thought you were fabulous. Oh my God. <laughs> trying not to sound like an idiot. And it's, I still can't do it, but you know what I do? Like I've been, I was telling you before we started this, I've been studying a lot of YouTube. Uh, I think, is that what you can tell people now? I study a lot of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> That's just That's me legit. on YouTube. <laughs> I'm studying, babe. She's like, you're not studying. But, you know, being on YouTube, looking at these, the things, I, like just what you said triggered something for me. The people that I really like are the people that I feel most like similar to. Like I'm watching people that have, you know, 5 million subscribers. But when I'm, when they're, when they're doing it, I'm like, oh, that guy's just at home. He's doing this. This is his business. He seems nice. He talks about his dog, does this. They're relatable. They're like me. And it's like, and so the same thing, you know, I want to scale and grow, but you're a relatable guy. 
you know, like, I, like, you know, there's no difference. You have family, you have friends, you, this is what brings us together. And by the way, I know a couple things like that stuff. Then, oh, okay, cool. Like, I want to listen to this guy because he's normal. But if it's like, yeah, I don't relate to that guy. It's really hard to buy from them. And so that vulnerability piece, authenticity is really big. And so, you know, how do you, how do people, because what happens is they say, well, I want to be, vul-. this is what I know. People say, I want to be authentic and they go, I get it. And I, I try and explain, like, there's a difference between being like 99% authentic and 100% authentic mm-hmm. because that 1% is everything. How do you get people to say, yeah, I want to be authentic, and then they don't? How do you get them to break through that? Because it's, it's still fear and insecurity, and they're like, eh, this is my authentic self, but it's not. I will quote the great Brene Brown first. There's a difference between vulnerability and authenticity and emotionally vomiting your bullshit on the people. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to hear all the details of what happened in your fight with your significant <laughs> other. I simply do not care. The, the Facebook ads? Fight- yeah, yeah, yeah. The fact that you're fighting with them is relatable. I don't need to know who gave what, who what. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a, there's a difference. Okay, so that's first. It. Okay. Here's the thing about authenticity and vulnerability. Whatever Joe and I are saying right now, we might be talking vanilla and strawberry and you might need chocolate. Well, whatever your story is, that last little fear and insecurity and worthiness issue of that 1%, there's another 1 million people out there minimum that's going to relate to that last 1% because that's who you are. That little idiosyncrasy or what you think is weird or what you think is a weakness or insecurity is what makes you beautiful. Yeah. It's what makes you unique and it's what's going to relate those other million people who you're holding back out of fear from whoever the hell they are and fuck them. And uh, excuse my French there, oh, but, that French 1%, <laughs> but that 1% <laughs> percent needs you. Yeah. They need you. That's who needs you. And you're not alone in your weirdness. You're not alone in your idiosyncrasies. You're not alone in your uniqueness. That's your tribe. And if you think it, you feel it, you've done it. So has a million others. So on one level, my, my dog really liked that one. I don't know what that love, was, but my dog really it. liked that one. <laughs> There's a big He's like, I got to go get my tribe. You got them all. <laughs> <laughs> you're so but good. <laughs> if you're holding back out of whatever they think, yeah. they are not your tribe. Yeah, yeah. So who cares what they think? That 1% who need that last little bit of you, those are the people. It's not just about you. And that's going to be your friends, your tribe, your family, your clients, your customers. It's beautiful. You know, and secretly, as uh, the reason I wanted to get you on the podcast, I just wanted some coaching. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I remember, like, that's why Joe Rogan blew up so much. He's been getting free coaching from the world's best for all Jesus. these years. It's the, it's the best thing you could ever do. Like, oh, you're a world-class thing on not being an idiot. Come talk to me. <laughs> He's like the Dalai Lama and so Jesus good, and Gandhi all in one. I love human. it. And it's because yeah. he's talked to all of them. Talk to them, right? It's That's good. who he hangs like, out with. That was my secret for you. You know what? <laughs> just everything that you just said, uh, it was mind blasting because that was, there's something that I've been trying to communicate to people. And you really helped me say it because that idea of that 99 to 100% authenticity, the piece that was missing was it's telling people, Hey, you've got to break that barrier. Got to break that barrier. The piece that's been missing is to say, because people need you to break that barrier. That's huge, man. I know like for, for for Ursula, she's about to embark on this journey of getting out of her own, not good enough, the imposter syndrome, all that stuff, because she's gonna be teaching ballet online and we wanna scale the crap out of this thing. And we're recording videos and she's, you know, she's just like anybody that's ever started recording videos, she has to go down into the yard and stare at the, the camera for like hours to be like, hi, I wanna tell you. And she became the douche peg mark. And, but this, this movement that she's trying to create, if we can find a way to unlock that and say, hey, let this 1% that's holding you back, that's who was going to resonate and who you're going to impact and help. So we got to find a way to get through that sooner than later. Cause I know the more that I'm building my stuff, the more like I'm a, just a, a, out of control, out of my mind, wonderful, lovely. But I'm like, I got to make sure I own that every time as quickly as possible and as consistently as possible. And that's why I like talking to you. Cause like, there's no bullshit. There's no like, Oh, there's a different level. We've been, we've had the same conversation now for about an hour and 20 minutes, right? It's good. And that's, that's why it's really, really powerful what you're talking about, man. That's thank you for that. Thank you, brother. Thank you. And, um, it's interesting. It's self-serving as well. And I'm not talking selfish. I'm talking self-serving. 
totally. because that idiosyncrasy, that weirdness that we probably beat ourselves up about in our brain and our hearts is a, again, what makes you great, what makes you unique and what people need to hear and talk about and be in tribe and connection together and do the math. And I'm not, I'm not going to bore people here. Like do 0.1% of the world population. That could be your tribe. That's a totally. big tribe. Huge. We don't and need you everybody. Do that within your community. I mean, it, you go, you could stay in whatever town you're in and yeah. do 1% big tribe. Yeah. Because if you think it, feel it, have experienced it, think it's weird or whatever, it's a, your uniqueness and B there's thousands of others yeah. and don't hold it back from them. Go in, yeah. help yourself too. It will help your self confidence and who you are as well by serving those people. Have, have you read the article 1000 fans? I don't think so. Yeah, but I'd it's, love to read it's it. something. Yeah, I, I'll send you a link to it. Um, but uh, it's I forget who wrote it, whatever. But I, it keeps kind of popping up every time I start to grow. You know, we're looking at building our membership this year, and Ursula's building her membership and all this stuff. But the the concept is very simple. It was just an article somebody wrote that said if you can get a thousand people to be your loyal raving fan, your zealots, yeah, your zealots, your zealots, and let's say you had each one of them give you a hundred bucks a year, you're making a hundred grand. Right. And, and like, I know even as we start projects, like I know I have some fans that every single thing I produce, they go, thank you so much. They love, they're just in it. And you go, well, wait, I know there's a thousand people just like that. And if you got a thousand people to give you a thousand dollars a year, like they're, you know, and that's not that much for the people that just love your stuff. Right. If you have a thousand people that buy this book, that's great. And you know, you want, or a thousand people that like Im apply the book, you want those fans that whatever you put out, they love your stuff. And I know I'm a big fan of a number of people. So I'm on one of their thousand lists, but it, yeah. Here. So if, if we think about that in that mm -hmm. way, then it's not this big mission to solve a million people. It's, you know, even just 10, start with 10 people that will never leave you and scale that, right? 100%. And that, that's and kind those of- those 10 like, people are going to talk to 10 others. Yeah. And 10 others. And, and I know like others. even as, as she launched her business, she's got three people that attend every class that wasn't even on the business plan. We're like, oh, that's, let's do more of that. That's way easier, <laughs> right? And you just yeah, like, go find those people. And the only way to find them, I'm going back to what you said, is it's that 1%. If you can get out of your own head and out of your own bullshit story and get past that insecurity, they need you to do it. And that's where you're going to find those thousands. So that, I think that just connected all those pieces that you're saying. So thanks for the coaching. And if you though. can't find, <laughs> if you can't quite do that last part, 1%, ask somebody for help to help you get there. A trusted mentor, a great friend, a family mm -hmm. member, hell, even hire a coach. It doesn't help get that last 1% out of you. Yeah. And it's cool what you said. Um, so the, the Lindsay who manages my entire practice, um, she, you know, we invest in her within masterminds and things. And, yeah. and she's, uh, it, 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 speaking of that, all you need is X amount of fans, huge Hillary Rushford and Marie Forleo fan. Yeah. I'm telling you, and she's sitting 10 feet from me. So I'm, she can hear what I'm saying. I'm telling you, if Marie Forleo came out with a recording of Mary had a little lamb, <laughs> Absolutely. Lindsay would buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Marie Forleo has some obsessive fans, dude. Yes. I'm on her Instagram. I, I like I follow her B school stuff and Instagram. I'm like, people go crazy. She she posts like just like, here's me doing a shoulder thing. They're like, oh my god, this is the best thing I ever saw. And absolutely crushing. It's crazy. And what she because she pushed she has, through that last one percent. Dude, that's a hundred percent. So let's you know we could do this for probably a whole day. So let's let's tie this all together in a neat little cute bow. Um, I don't know. That's never been my saying, but that's gonna be my new thing. Cute little sales bow. Let's do it. So <laughs> uh, if so, somebody comes to you and they say, "Man, I want to. I'm I'm already great." Because you, you work with people that are already high I'm already performers. Great. I'm already so listen. I'm already great. <laughs> Tiger King. I'm already great, and I need to get greater. So we're gonna go. They're they're coming to you saying I'm a high performer. I'm doing well. I'm not really you know I'm not struggling in terms of hitting my numbers. But I know that you know we can use the 10x. I know I can do way more. Forget about my quotas. Forget about my things. I know I could do more. I'm struggling. I know there's, I read your book. I'm struggling with relationship stuff. Where do we begin? How long does it take? What does this journey look like for me? Because I'm just afraid to take step one. Help me understand where I'm going with you. So we all, especially, we all have our blind spots. 
And my job and your job is not to change any human being at all. It's to help get the best out of them. Like literally get the best out of them. Give them tools, tactics, simple to do. There's an accountability function to it. There's a process to this. You have a process. I have a process. And so I'm a big fan that we always need to be investing in ourselves, reading, coaching, gratitude, master, whatever it is to be just a little bit better so that we can serve ourselves and others to the fullest. So if there's one area in your life, whether it's happiness, success, money, balance, time, relationships, self-confidence, there's always a little bit of that Mm -hmm. is you just got to lean in and great, the great CEOs, the great athletes, the great entertainers, they all have one thing in common is they've got great people getting great things out of them. You know, they're, they're just, that's what they do. Even Tony Robbins, who's arguably the biggest coach in the world, I think he's got three or four coaches that he constantly works with. And so, so as do I. And so if this resonates with you, there's a process, you know, you, there's one-on-one, you know, we can go all in. That's the deep dive. And, and brother, when I tell you I'm all in and fully present and proactive with these people, you have, I mean, at the end of the day, I have to fill my cup back up because I'm oh, all yeah, in. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, we, in my particular practice, we do it one-on-one. We do it in the format of retreats. We bring 10 to 12 people together. Um, sometimes we have to do them virtual in times like this, but most of the time we do them in person. We bring 10 to 12 people together. We come together in connection. We come together with deep work on all phases, business, money, relationship, mindset. And then we go into a mastermind together for the next year where 10 minds become one. It's a beautiful thing. So there's one-on-one options. There's mastermind options. If I'm not your flavor, if Joe's not your flavor, there's a flavor out there for you. Please go find it, man. Please. I don't, or or a woman, I don't care. Just go do it. Invest in yourself. It's the best investment you'll ever make. Success, happiness, fulfillment. And so for me, it's about the book. It's about one-on-one. It's about running masterminds, running retreats. We've got digital products coming out. I'm not going to go into my sales pitch, but if this no, resonates do it. No, you, do it. Tell, tell people where, what kinds of stuff you got. Because I, yeah. so I think people need start to with the book. If, yeah. if the book. Start with the book, Legendary. And uh-huh. it's, it's, become a, it's become a commercial success. It's a USA Today and Wall Street best-selling journey. Love it. It is literally the journey I took in my life that I apply every single day. I walk this journey with you and countless and countless and countless of others. I've done one-on-one in mastermind settings. Yeah. If you like that, you can invest in digital products that were coming out. Purpose is coming out. It'll be out by the time this airs. If, if, if you want to tip your toes, come to a retreat for three days. Get in, get in with 10 other men. Get in there. Get in there and talk. let's talk about money, relationships, life. Let's be better. And then we can go into a further relationship together, whether it's a mastermind, which is a year long commitment, or we can go into one-on-one, which is the most intensive thing I offer. And so it's the most fulfilling work I've ever done. I'm all in. I, there's, this is a zero judgment free zone. If you say something to me that you wow me, I'm going to send you a trophy because I don't think you can do it because I I'm in the pain and purpose business brother. And I I hear it all. And so, man, the only thing I can say is participate in your own rescue. And what I mean by that, if there's an area of your life that you're not happy with, don't blame somebody else or whatever your circumstances or mistakes you make. Go find the nearest mirror. Go look into it. That's the person that can fix it. That's the person that needs to step in and go find somebody or something to help you through it, brother. And so um, one thing, man, real quick, if you want a flavor of the book, if you go, I'm going to spell this because of my Southeastern accent, but if you go to tommybreedlove.com forward slash gifts that's g-i-f-t-s g-i-f-t-s we're giving away the financial confidence and freedom chapters we're giving away the master your mindset chapters we're giving away my story which is at the beginning we touched on it here and that way you can get a flavor and i think right now during all of this you know covid crisis and other things this is a really good time for helping with mindset helping with money because we've got some insecurities around that Mm -hmm. and just to be better people if that's your flavor Go out and get the book, man. It, it's available at all your bookstores. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. And, well, if you're Joe, cheap like me, buy it, on, buy it on Kindle, man. Once you buy, buy it on, on Kindle, Kindle, brother. It's like, I think I paid 10 bucks. I love it. Now I'm going to buy like 10 <laughs> copies hardback, right? But, you know, like it's it's so good. What, like, it's on book, Audible too now. You can, no, if you if you dig you this like, accent, dude, I will read to you. <laughs> I, I'm going to fall asleep to the, your book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ursula's going to think I'm cheating on her. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love yeah, it, man. man. You know, dude, I, I got I to gotta thank you. Like any people that are listening, people watching this, um, <clears throat> you know, you could tell the intention, the energy, the commitment, 
that that Tommy has to to not only his clients but to himself. Because mm-hmm. I know probably if I if we do another interview in a couple of years, you're gonna also be different because you're doing the work. So anybody that wants to scale, that wants to grow, all the words that you say that you want, you can tell that there's a deeper meaning behind what it's gonna take to get there. It's not following your own bullshit and you know you keep reading the same story over and over. You know, going after and creating a new one. And I really love everything you've talked about. This is a very very powerful message that you've got. And whatever I can do to get more people in front of it, go buy this book you cheapskates um and uh and, and read it and apply and it. it yeah don't just buy it <laughs> no just buy it and then see and then we'll get a thousand raving fans that have read it but uh no like go go really apply this stuff just step by step and don't be afraid of the the massiveness that's the journey ahead of you you just gotta take a step man and that's all mm. just like we talked about it before we started we you know we're putting on the covid weight go take one step outside go have one protein shake go get a little bit sore whatever your goal is man go drink this swamp juice but thank you so much for joining me today man this has been great this is a really really powerful episode brother joe you're so welcome man thank you for mm. having me i love you brother it's mm. bump. <laughs> Ooh, love it, baby. all right there we go that's great dude that's awesome man awesome stuff that was awesome stuff <laughs> you know what's Although, so good about when, when is scott gonna... i have a client coming soon when is he gonna be here <laughs> Okay, we're good at the moment. <laughs> it's like, I'm pretty sure there's a client coming soon. Yeah. You know what's great about this is what we just did. I don't have to edit shit, man. I just put you into my template now. There's nothing we got to take out. It was perfect. Mm. Yeah, no, every, everything, just the flow. Your, I mean, just your energy, dude. I, it's very impactful. So I, I appreciate having you in my life now. You're stuck with me. Dude, and I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm, I'm not pretty serious. I'm very serious about, you know, when, when borders open up. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming the United States and Canada will still be friends. Yeah. <laughs> you never know the damn politicians get involved. Who knows, Who's going to be friendly we'll with We'll meet each at the other, border. You know? We'll touch like in jail. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. He's a nice guy, but he's Canadian. Yeah. But he's a nice guy. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. They'll be like, don't trust that guy's accent. I'm like, come on, eh? <laughs> yeah, hey. But you betcha. Um, That's how we talk. And by the way, uh, Lindsay's laughing. She's from Minnesota. So she's close to you guys. Minnesota. You know, <laughs> oh man but yeah I, i'm serious about getting on a kayak and uh Dude. having some whiskey and and talking life and love and all things yeah we you know what better, like, here, here, you know what you'll like because this i think this will be your style here is like last night this is where we so we've got our awesome neighbors that we uh, live beside and last year we have like up at the top of the property um we built there was an area that we got because our other neighbor tore out their fire pit so we built this up shut up that yeah, is man. badass dude i know so we've got let's see so we've got that let's see yeah so That's awesome man yeah so that was us just playing crib and sitting by the fire having playing guitar that's Hell it yeah. man we got camping it's like basically a resort we don't leave so it's like you're all you're just always in burning man pretty much man it's like we like when quarantine happened and we're like like i said our friend our neighbors are about 70 and they're our best friends we just drink wine with them and we probably go there right now drink wine and uh it. we play crib and we hang out we go shopping together like quarantine didn't affect us at all we have huge like between the two properties we were on like a private road and just like right down to the water so we share everything and we have i think eight fire pits that we go sit at like all over the place and we just and we have geese oh man we have geese now at the beach we have 13 uh 13 teenage ones and like five little goslings but we've been watching them grow up feed them seeds and now i have a blanket they all come sit around me and just eat off my blanket all the little baby goslings awesome, i'm like man. it's ridiculous so, that's a blessed existence and we were very very crazy, fortunate man. I'm glad we can say this offline. We were very blessed too. We've got a, a, a lake cottage about an hour from where we live. Oh, that's great. We live in a, I live in a very nice uh, part which is quiet and people are kind, but we've had our group of 10 to 20 this whole time, either at the lake cottage or here yep. um, from fires to floats to connect. So, we didn't, we didn't lose connection. You know, we respected the people that didn't want to connect, but you know, we kept our, our tribe tight, but um, we, we didn't feel the pinch near as bad yeah. as the folks. And in it's New York because you, because City. you've built your, your community, right? Like built the community and there was trust and yeah. you know, we weren't crazy, but we, we, we didn't feel it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we just kept like you did, we kept serving, kept getting out there, kept yeah. talking. 
kept asking people how I could help them. Well, we, you know, I mean, and, the other part, we took, we took a big hit, like whether well, it's a losing a job and uh, you know, I lost a ton of income because it was 60% all, uh, in one day, but, brother, dude, right here. I, yeah. One well, day. Like, uh, in Je- <laughs> I had, when, I think when we talked, I had rebuilt my business at the end of the year, I fired all my clients cause I wanted to build workshops. So I built all these face-to-face workshops and booked them all out. <laughs> and then after the first one, it was a week later, they're like, you can't visit yeah, anybody. <laughs> yeah. so then, but then my mind was like, okay, I got to build it online. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do that just yet. So I, I didn't work for about three months on my own stuff. And then we launched her. So now we're getting back into it. And this is, this has been the lowest income for many years, but the best, um, lift in, in, in lifestyle. So it's been, it's been a really interesting time to be yeah, like, fuck it. There, and we're about to blow this thing off. Out you got to say that somewhere on a platform. Cause yeah, people like me find that stupid inspiring. I think so. Right. And that's, that's what I got. Oh, I got to make sure I hit my goals now so that that story is a little bit more meaningful <laughs> to be like, I feel better than ever. I haven't done better. anything, but I still feel better than ever. <laughs> <laughs> still n- need some customers, but <laughs> no, but you know, what's actually one of the things I've been doing is helping people with like systems and automations. And like my sister uh, works for a big company and they were like, well, what system should we use for email marketing? I'm like, yeah, here, just use my affiliate link. So I've been doing a ton of affiliate deals. Uh, and then they're like, well, let's hire you as a consultant. So they brought me on as a consultant. So I'm doing all their strategy and that's what I'm getting. I'm just serving all these people. They're like, come help us. I'm like, I guess I just, I just Every want to sit by the fire. Is a workshop, brother. <laughs> What's that? <clears throat> Every one of those is a workshop too. Absolutely. So we're, it's all starting to grow. Like we're, I've just been sitting here recording video and the video, like part about the serving and the YouTube stuff is I'm really trying to put my intention behind what I'm producing so that I know how long it's taking me to get this stuff completed, but what's going to come out on the other end is really highly valuable. It's not me just mailing it in to try and get customers. And I think that is going to come through in the, in the way that we launch it. So you'll see That's some awesome, really cool man. stuff. Yeah. Because people are like, Holy shit, this is the best thing I've ever been in because I know how shitty workshops and online training I've been a part of. Right. Like, it's just like, meh, it's okay. But this is like, <laughs> I want people to watch it and be like, I'm part of something right away i love it man yeah dude i love it joe how can i help you brother anything um you know what nothing right now i'm like once i launch this stuff i'll send you some things you can see it right now it's kind of it's been not necessarily a selfish journey right now it's me just going inside and like reframing everything i'm doing and now i'm I'm coming on the other side being like oh yeah this is about to go crazy so once i once i'm ready to push i'll let you know you can share it out please let me know and as soon as these things open up man let's be intentional about getting up there Absolutely, dude. Love it, brother. All right, brother. Have a great day, man. Say hi to Lindsay. Go have fun with your dogs. Have fun with your clients. And thanks again for doing this. This is great. Yeah, thank you, brother. It's been awesome. Have a great day. Bye.